Let's go to Theo Maladon. Um, Jason, what, what's your thoughts on, on Theo, another Frenchman? Theo's been, you know, on uh, on the NBA radar since he was 15 years old. Uh, he's very precocious talent. Uh, I like Theo. In fact, going into the season, I had him um, ahead of Killian Hayes hmm. um, just because um, I think Theo, you know, ha- has a more natural scoring ability. Uh, definitely a better shooter, you know, uh, both as far as both with his pull up jump shot and from three point range. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Theo hasn't taken his game perhaps to the next level this far, which is something Killian Hayes has done. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, uh, Theo, uh, you know, he's he had a slow start to the season. He had a shoulder injury. Um, he struggled a bit early in the season, you know, playing in the Euro League. This was his first year in the Euro League, and even though he got he, you know, he has been getting big minutes. He often starts. Um, you know, he he struggled a bit early in the season, um, but the past, I'd say, the past couple months, you know, I'd say since the new year begun, he's been uh, playing quite well. And I think that you know, while his draft draft stock did drop early in the season, I think it's going to go back up. Mm. And uh, even though I rank him behind uh, both Denny. And uh, Killian, I think that Theo Maladon is going to be closer to the top two than he than he is now. You know, I think he's definitely you know the third the third guy. You know, after those two. Anyways, uh, like I said, he's another guy. You know, who could be labeled as a combo guard also. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, I think he's going to be more of a, um, of a of a point guard. Uh, the guy I've compared him to in the past has been um, Darius Garland. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know they're both uh, they're both good shooters. Uh, I describe I've described him as a guy who's pl- who's sh- offense, who's scoring, who's shooting sets up his playmaking and not the other way around. Mm, okay. You know he got he's a guy who to get going needs to maybe hit a couple shots and mm-hmm. then he'll look to you know distribute the ball. Uh, he's a guy that's going to create space to penetrate and you know run the pick and roll. Because, you know, he can make, you know, pull up jump shots. Um, so I think that's, you know, a big, a big factor with him. Um, once again, this is kind of a stereotype of French kids mm-hmm. because, you know, uh, definitely Frank has it. Uh, and to some degree, even uh, Killian Hayes has it. You know, he's not this fiery vocal guy out on the court and, you know, Sometimes when you in a point guard, you want to see your point guard, you know, be mm-hmm. more emotional yeah. because that implies that he's going to be telling guys, you know, what to do. But you have to understand, though, that, you know, sometimes, you know, it's a stereotype, but there's truth to it. French guys seem to be that way, you know, more often than not. Mm. And once again, you know, this kid's been playing. He, he's very mature and polished and confident in himself, but he's a guy that's been playing with older guys since he was 15. So he's kind of had this you know, ingrown natural instinct to defer out of respect mm. to the older guys. So that's kind of why, you know, he's kind of afraid of, you know, stepping on the veterans uh, toes, but uh, at the junior level, he was a go-to guy. And I think that, you know, once he gets the green light from the coach that, you know, he'll, he'll be more out. aggressive on offense and he's definitely a good shooter. What do you have him? Cause I, I, I'm not sure if we, if we have the same stat. What do you have him shooting at? Um, um, statistically, if you have that in front of you, uh, I don't have it in front of me. Okay. I don't have it in front of me. So, uh, cause I'm seeing, I, I don't know if what I'm seeing is accurate because I'm seeing 28% from three, almost 40 overall. But I don't know if that's accurate based on how you describe yeah, it. Uh, yeah, like I said, this season's stats may be, may be misleading because, mm-hmm. you know, he was injured for a while. Uh, he definitely struggled to adapt to the higher level of competition in the EuroLeague. Mm-hmm. But his, uh, his his career stats have him being, you know, closer to 40%. 40%. Uh, than 40%. Okay. Okay. And you know, just if you look at his shot, if you look at his side, uh, he's – his shot mechanics are definitely very, very fluid. He has a he has a nice looking shot for him, and that's definitely not a weak spot for him. Um, and like I said, he's got uh, like Killian Hayes. He has a very nice size. Mm. He's not as big strength wise. He doesn't have as big a frame, but I think they're comparable heights, about six five, both of them, um, which you know will enable him to perhaps you know play play both uh, uh, guard spots. 
I envision Maladon maybe being more of a combo than a straight point guard. Mm -hmm. um, he can definitely defend both uh, guard positions because, you know, in addition to having decent size at 6'5", he's got very long arms also. Um, he's got nice wingspan. Um, what I say about uh, about Theo Maladon is that he, he may not have a super high ceiling, but he has a very high floor. He has a very high floor. I think he's a safe pick. He's a guy that he's going to probably be a, a career fringe starter. Mm. Worst case scenario, he'll be a rotation player. Best case scenario, he'll be a starter. Um, perhaps not an all star, but I think he's I think he's I think he's a player. I think he's going to be a good NBA player and have a long career. Uh, so I definitely think that you know in the second half of the first round. Um, you know, I don't know if he'll be there at 25 for the Knicks, but I definitely think that, you know, he's a guy that's going to go, you know, in the first round, for probably top 20. Okay, so to be, to be clear, the difference between him and Killian and why Killian would be higher is because Killian is more of a natural playmaker. Is that what you're trying to – is that what you're – you read that or not? Well, right now he is. Going through the season, I didn't think that. Um, but right now, Killian has an edge because he's uh, developed into you know a better point guard. And just because he's on the rise, I think Killian has improved in virtually every aspect of his game. Mm -hmm. um, it, whereas Theo has kind of plateaued a bit. Uh, once again, though, he had kind of a rough start to the season. Mm. Uh, the past couple months, I'd say since mid-January, though, he's been playing. He's been playing much, much better with much more confidence, both as a scorer and as a playmaker. So I'd say I do give Killian Hayes an edge because he's been a better playmaker thus far. That's probably the main thing. And just because he's playing with more confidence, okay. you know, and he has a bigger role on his team, you know, it's... Uh, Maladon, he's playing with a veteran team that has a bunch of other point guards. So, you know, if he's not getting it done, you know, the coach has got plenty of alternatives. Whereas uh, Ulm really took a big, big gamble on, uh, on Killian Hayes and the gamble's paid off, you know, for everybody there.